Welcome back to another Real Talk Reaction. This one right here is for Peaky 5 Fo. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You all already know. Let's go. All right, one comment from the nastiest in the room who says, The actress that played Polly was going through chemo during season four and five. That's why her hair was all cut, cut off season four. And yeah, she did look haggard, but she was a really beautiful lady. I mean, she looks fantastic right now. So uh, she's, she's good. Now, she, huh? she got all of her. I mean, I think she passed away. I don't know if she passed away from cancer, but I'm pretty uh, sure somebody told in us. Real life? Yeah, that oh, in her life she did pass away. All right, let's get into the next episode right now. Get it for him, like Grace gets it for him, babe. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shelby, my bullet oh, is against the sage of Tinker Head. That's Billy, the billabos. Lost to our knees in sin, young blood, sir, and the royal die. We are the brick and dairy Billy boys. Mr. McCubbin, the colour is the same, the outcome is the same. I believe we have friends in common. We Drown me a rose. sleeping downstairs and then my husband came home drunk from the Marcus even though we just lost his job we don't have any money anyway he came to bed but downstairs they must have heard a noise they woke up they started uh, calling out they woke my husband up when he's drunk you don't wake him up what happened then Mrs Connor went downstairs. He killed her kids? Is that what it's all of them, all three of them. And you've, um, you've, you've brought their bodies here tonight with you. Proof, Mr. Shelby. Hey. Three new golf inches. Have them delivered to your door. <laughs> so I've got a 
and you know, feathers. The new ones I will call Thomas, Arthur and Finn. And I'll make him pause, even when he's drunk. Good day, Mr. Champagne. I mean, I'm dealing with okay. social shit like Boy. this. He wants to be though, like he Yeah. Hold on now, you two. I mean, you gotta be so really, you gotta get the people really behind you. Don't. No, Miss Arthur. That woman. There's only two rooms downstairs. Her husband has lost his job and he beats her. And yet the thing that brings her to see a member of parliament is songbirds. And that's politics, Arthur. Yeah, that's politics. Yeah, it's not for me. Anyway, look. At least the loop is <laughs> yeah, for me. Yeah, it's football, baby. Hey, so I promise so. Maybe we should put him on the track. Just a thought. Finn, yeah? You're doing so hard with every delivery. Well, must have delivery. And about to start one, too. Mm -hmm. Tommy, the next fan I want to see Boxy. Do you know his face? No, it's Chinese. Chinese in our book. Get some Chinese shit in the beginning. My name is Brian Chang. They want to kill some Chinese motherfuckers. Well, that was because they were Brian Chang. Pedophiles or something, yeah. right? Yeah, dead. Perhaps. Sometimes I wonder, is this heaven? <laughs> Doesn't smell like heaven. So I would say I have survived. What happened to Maggie? You don't like me. Uh oh. God. Is this a setup? Is this something happening? I like fucking everything. You should answer the phone, Mr. Shelby. Ooh, shit! Y'all don't fuck around, get me. Mickey, bring that far in now. Sent a woman with a gun to your youngest brother's office. For what, Finn? Wait, wait. What the fuck is going on? We're going. It's automatic. Do you want to die again, Chen? Good. The guns are pointed. Now we're all concentrating. The moment is now pure. Purity is not necessary in this place. I'm not necessary. They said, Tommy Shelby. That door will need some kicking down. When you walk through that door, it was open. You don't need to do anything to get my attention. Now, what exactly do you want? Do you have a match, Mr. Shelby? Oh, fucking prolonged shit. Anything happens to my brother, Jim, you die. If you die here today, we'll bury your face down with no hands and go straight to hell. I don't care about rituals. I am a rest, Mr. Shelby. I'll tell your friend on the phone to put a gun down and we can all have a talk. <gasps> Hold your fire, brother. Hold your fire. I'm alright. 
Do a crack run. Is that what that is? I don't do drugs, homeboy. But you waste all this time coming here and do drugs on my table. It is the purest opium that has ever arrived in Europe. No salt, no flour, no lies. Pure truth. And you know, he'd be smoking opium. Can you remember? Mm -hmm. That's how he used to get out of his head about Dr. his Pablo nightmares about the war. Uh, Steve had also held a good point. Johnny's unloaded cargo on the lights of lanterns. The foreman at the dock estimated there was seven tons of this stuff. I made a note at the time. <laughs> I made a note about it. I already knew how to that particular foreman. And I worked out that seven tons of pure opium crystals would be worth approximately one million one hundred ninety thousand pounds on international markets. That's why he's like, see Arthur? Me it taking crashed. notes with all these conversations, you mm -hmm. see how this is Wall Street. Now we all keep our ears open for opportunities. Then we are conducting a piece of business. Get a gun to my fucking head. Get his trousers are dry. He didn't piss himself. He didn't piss himself off. Well oh, done, Fee. Did you have any disputes with a lady and you didn't piss yourself? But after the eight tells me we should put you on the tracks. It'll be a good day for you after all, Finn. Give me that. Hey. Always have your claws searched at the door. You see how bitch on the streets are yeah, looking right. for All right, right. come on. Too late for that now, Pim. He's getting hot like John yeah. needs to get, babe. But. He's like, just like John. Let that be a lesson to you, dumbass. Have your hoes search at the door, man. H have your what? Your hoes. You were trying, you're, you're, you're trying to get it together. Yeah, okay, I'm trying to do hoes. Every time, every time you think the story just going. You see, you see what you just said. I'll throw it in the canal. No, you won't. We know you like to smoke that opium. Yeah. Damn, now we got a new fucking gangster in the, in the mix. Poor shit. That's why we gotta clean this shit up. Let you. We gotta clean this shit up. So if you call the mates here, the location is part of the deal. What fucking deal? How does it feel to be barefoot in the mud again, Paul? Makes me feel young. What fucking deal? Four boats, four days. Up the Grand Union from Poplar to here. Half the cargo is coal. And underneath the coal, pure opium crystal. I feel. I'll fight against it. They can't use trucks because the Chinese drivers get stopped by the police. They need to get it out of London because all the warehouses have been searched by customs. The seven tons is bound for San Francisco. The outward ship doesn't sail for seven days from Liverpool. They need someone safe to store it. All we have to do is take it up the canal and keep it here for a week. We don't fuck with the Chinese, though, Tom. They've always said it. Ask yourself, would he turn down £250,000? Drive four boats 
broke the canal without prospect of inspection. Why won't you get the top? Eat. Mm. Boy, 250,000 pounds. That's half of what Marco lost in Chicago. Oh, shit. I will ask him to take charge of this business. Marco's position will be reinstated in the company. This period of quality will be over. Then I vote yeah. for it. Oh, then, yeah, okay. Yeah, that might be. Take a panic, brother. Four boats sailing up the cut, smelling of wood smoke and bacon. But which one of Charlie's gypsy diddy quit friends do you trust on, eh? With a cargo worth a million pounds. I've already made provision. I need another meeting. Let's fight. Those in favour? He is really doing a good job of including him, though. It's two to one. Mm. What did you just say you weren't going to do? Arthur, oh, yeah. tell John we need four four tons of coal back to get started. Sell us out tonight. Don't forget to go to the bull ring. Get that three cylinder engine going. If I'm presenting the deal, that's already a yes vote for me. If I'm bringing it to the table. Now I just need to convince y'all. What have you heard, Paul? The man you put went to the police. But we dealt with it. Shoot Oh, he's killed. He was the B.O. Fulton. I thought he killed him. I thought he killed him too. But they say his face is so bad it cut his heart to look at. So I would say it. I would also say it is time to give up on Linda. Find someone else who might be able to put your fires out. Oh, Polly took care of him though. I thought they'd take care of him. What you gonna do? What you gonna do though? Pay him off or just what? Record dog, pal. Oh, fucking George! That's it. That's it. That's it. We're gonna see one of them doctors that can dig all this shit out of my head. Thank you, no. For reasons I can't divulge, I need to keep Jimmy McCavan alive. But I've already got a time and place for the killing. You see. A little alleyway by a shipyard canteen. A girl called Karen who hates him will give him up. I have the sound of cranes and winches to cover the gunshot. I've got a Bentley to get me away. The war with the Billy Boys is postponed. We've made peace. We're going to do business together. When that business is done, it's all yours. You could avenge the death of your son in any way you see fit. Any yeah, way you see fit. You mean when you say. When you check that little stop come on, Tommy. Got you have to know this is bullshit. Like, they, come they on. They killed your girl. Right. you all in. And then you will marry, and you will settle. Marry? Marry who, Mr. Shelby? Just let me understand you. Do you mean that Polly is part of this deal? Yeah. Does Polly know she's part of this deal? Well, she just voted for it. Well, holy Lord God. Oh, I'm sorry, Polly. Really she deep voted deep for our uh, Chinese stuff. Yeah. Minutes. I believe it's called the ego these days. <clears throat> I read books. You sit on your throne and you instruct Polly Gray, who is of far richer blood than you, as to when she can and when she can't marry. I know she instructs herself. She has her own strategies, and we are of the same blood. She will marry you, but only if you agree to postpone any attack on the cavern until this business is done. So she is some young gypsy bride that's yours to give away. Young she. Uh, I was on the bridge tonight. I don't. And I looked down. And Grace was there. Yeah, but she was still alive. Tom, have you still been taking 
Mission Lord now. We met the barge. It was the January. Our dad's boat. The boat I was born on. We've never got nothing. We've never got nothing, and we never fucking will. Dr. Brooks said that you never arrived for your appointment, Tom. No. There's nothing in these books of any use to a man like me. They talk about guilt, eh? Guilt. What fucking guilt? The Black Barge. No, no, that's not it. That's not it. He had it right. Mosey had it right. He said, forbidding is forbidden to us. We can do anything. Nothing can stop us. But there's a part of me that is unfamiliar to myself. And I keep finding myself there. Not only the journey that can get me away. He's tried the doctors again, Tom. And Tom's losing it. Mm-hmm. Well, then at least throw away your opium. It's that that causes the visions. Just throw it away. While it's there, it's a temptation. Yeah? How much have you got left? Seven tons. Seven tons? Yep. I feel to run out, I am. I hate to run out. You do me a favor. When that kid of yours arrives, keep it away from me. Fucking valley. Wants to impress someone. No one invited. You and Gina. Why? Because he wants to give you the chance to come back properly. Cole Hollage. Yeah. Oh. Tommy wants you to reopen those books and become a managing director. So I've come back from Detroit to become the call man. The first delivery is bound for San Francisco. But if it works, Tommy thinks he can find distribution for it here. And there's some... Um, coal. There's coal. Is it Snow White? No. Golden Brown. Opportunity, Michael. Case in my list. There is more money in this than there is in all the other parts of our business put together. Tommy knows what opium does to people. Tommy knows what whiskey does to people. Got an OBE for selling it. <laughs> Got an OBE for selling. I'll speak to Gina. <laughs> or what? Do what? I'll it's consult my wife. my wife. That's how you do things in, 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 in America? 1901. And he shipped coal. Real coal. Just coal. And his fingernails. And his eyelids. And his ears were black with it. And the merchants would offer them one price. And then they pay half because they could. And that was wrong, Michael. Golden Brown is more to her taste. It's 
especially when you tell her how much money I'm going to earn. Holly is such a gangster. <laughs> Son. I brought you in his life, though. Fit, do you kick the ball with, Mr. Sherman? I have no religion. So not to wish I had. He's kidding? Yep. I'm a simple fellow. It's a lot less simple than you might at first think. Do you trust them? Right, so I take a boatload. Now, <clears throat> ten sacks to start with, so you can test the market. Then we'll do them bulk loans. Cash payment, unloading, ten thousand pound. Well, for that amount, it'll have to be a check. Don't take checks. It'll be a check. I won't take a check that's guaranteed by our mutual friend in London, Mr. Mansley. Shelby is a socialist and believes in the quality of service for all classes. Believes in equality for all classes. According to the invitation, they'll be in until nine o'clock. So the children are tired and will leave. Well, if you see a duke, introduce me. Oh God, that's something you like about England. Gina, I've been very off now. Let's go back into the company. Michael, we agreed the baby will be born in New York. Remember? The job is home. Remember? Supply, transport. Opium. That's all the stuff I use. Tommy. Has made contact. Tommy. Tommy has made contact. Chinese supplies were plantation to the Afghan hills. Pure grade. We'll take delivery. We'll ship it all over Europe. You mean heroin? Yes. And how much would you make? A conservative estimate. Three shipments a year from Shanghai, seven tons each. Stand to make approximately a million pounds per annum. Dang. The company will make three. Damn. That's we could go to New York whenever we wanted. And our own fucking plane. We always have to come back, yes. right? For a million pounds a year, we do. What happens if you get caught? Tommy has friends. 
If the ship gets stopped, it'll be the Chinese who hang. Think about it, Gina. When we move into our house, our room for entertainment will be twice this size. Will it now? Okay, and they're young and dumb. Magazines say that it's all straight lines and simplicity in the 1930s. Deco is dead. We'll be able to afford dukes and duchesses. And maybe, maybe a princess or two. And the painting on the wall will be of you. This time the Shelby will be gone. And it will be Michael Gray arranging the ballet. Where will Tommy be? Where he wants to go to most. Ah. There. The Lord. Actually, I think Mr. Moss is a baronet. We have opium, cocaine, and brandy. I don't use opium or cocaine. And brandy is for after dinner, not before. I also have a list of options for the end of the evening. You will notice that the maids wear name tags. We hire them specially. For those guests staying the night. All things are available. Except the ballerinas. And who might I ask are you? I am the queen amongst the Romanies. And I too am unavailable. I'm not on the, um, what's it called? The menu. Something I didn't tell you about this evening. Something about our guest. Lovely. It's possible that, that you've met him before. Before when? Before you became who you are. Back when you were selling, you know. Would you even remember him? Would he remember you? Hey, look, you get a little jealous. Mm -hmm. All I remember is I drank too much champagne. I wasn't taking cash. That's why you brought me in here, to lay your claim. Yeah. Yeah. To lay your claim. Well, it's a start, I suppose. He lays a fucking hand on you. He will be mate for Johnny Dogs. You were indisposed when I arrived. society you greet a guest you don't leave from hanging looking around like a fucking dog <clears throat> before we join the others i have some business I need a signature by the way your brandy before dinner thing amuses me but none of the maids are of interest and i despise the use of drugs your strategies are very transparent 
involved in a transaction with Jimmy McCavan, an acquaintance from the north. I have no idea who you mean. No, I trust him, not to pay by a check. I need your signature as a guarantor of the transaction. Should his check fail to be honoured? The sum is £10,000. And what is it he is buying from you? Gin distillery. He's buying me all, and I'm buying a new one. See, I feel like he's setting him up. So, not only is the truce holding, but you two are actually doing business. Yeah, you still don't trust these checks. If I sign a check guarantee for this man, it is proof of a connection between me and him. Something you could later use against me. Why do I want to move against you? Because I'm a piece of shit. Curious about my weaknesses. And you've learned it's not cocaine, not maids. But now you will learn my weakness is a tendency to trust people to know them. My weakness. Is a tendency to trust people? <clears throat> I know you had no classical education, but I just realized you were the perfect balance between the gods Dionysus and Apollo. Irrational frenzy, controlled by reason and self-reflection. Do you know the work of Friedrich Nietzsche? No, truly. Yes. There. Your guarantee of trust. Now perhaps you could introduce me to your wonderful wife. So, did you know? What? Oh, the tonight special guest might have fucked you when you're a nightclub hostess. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Lizzie, if we were to strike from our guest list, every man in Birmingham who you... Yes or no? Fucking yes. Shit. Why is it worth it, love? It's Oswald. Well. This is my wife, Elizabeth. Lizzie, it's Oswald well, well, Mosley. Since we all appear to know, and since knowledge is permission, I'm sure, Mr. Shelby, in the spirit of our honest relationship, oh you know what saying, was a bottle of champagne and an evening well spent. Actually, it was an evening wasted. For the champagne and brandy you bought me. As I recall, it was the booze that put you to sleep a little prematurely. Ladies <gasps> and gentlemen. Oh, the Go ahead, Lizzie. Nice. Put you to sleep, bro. God damn it. Mr. Mosley. <laughs> Toast, if I may. To the end of our deal. The beginning of something more. Happy birthday, Lizzie. This way. You want to come in there? Fuck up my oh, look, look at Polly. Look at Polly. Why is she there? You killed that boy for you. 
Does he have a gun? Does she have a gun? That was a family occasion. <gasps> She's a gun. That's how you, her hands behind her. Look, I'm sorry, Linda. That animal inside me. It comes out and I can't stop it. Okay. Fuck Linda. Without you, I can't. Come inside, please. His name was Frederick. All we ever did was talk, Arthur. He just listened. And now he has no face. Yeah, because he can't even fight. I gotta go see what's going on. He's as ugly on the outside as you are on the inside. episode four of Peaky Blindness man another great episode man they just keep they just keep surprising me with like excuse me all different elements that's just happening right you think you just we're just gonna watch these two stories happen boom there's a the third story now and the fourth one they're gonna add on top of that just to you know keep things going I mean hopefully it's gonna all intertwine back together at the end as it normally does but man this was another spectacular watch right here. Um, yeah, I didn't see Linda coming back at the end. I thought she'd be mad and, like, maybe talk to Arthur at some point. But I didn't think she was going to roll up and, like, want to take him out murder style and kill his ass. Um, and she almost got away with it, too. Polly had to jump up off that, that sex she was having and be like, what's the fuck going on over there? And took her ass out. Because I was like, man. We about to get rid of Arthur right now? It's like, is he is he gone, gone? And the show was like, no, we got some more to do with Arthur to, to you know to help out on this on this scale of a uh, plot that that uh, Tommy got going on. So, you know, you get it how you live, and and Linda, you got it how you live all day long. I don't know if she did, but back in the day, day at that time, getting shot point blank like that, you're probably gonna go ahead and die. And so we'll see how that go with that. Tommy Masterman, Masterman. Um, what has he got, like, cooking? I can't wait to find out. For sure, for sure, I can't wait to find out. And, yeah, is Michael's wife working with Mosley? Or is Mosley just, like, attracted to, like, who's this bitch over here? She don't look like she's from here. She's an American. Maybe. Gina. But, like you said, babe, she didn't know he was a Barton or Bar what the fuck she said it was. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why you already know that? If you don't like shit about England. So we'll find out if she's a um, trespasser suspect. Uh, but I loved it. Can't wait to see another one. Um, yeah, so another great episode. I'll just go through my highlights of the episode or the stuff that stood out to me the most. My MVP award for this episode goes to Lizzie. I thought the way that she shut that shit down with Mosley, knowing that he was trying to use this whole situation to get in Tommy's head, I thought she killed it, and I especially love Polly's reaction to it. Be like, yeah, bitch, you killed it. <laughs> it was so good. Like, her little smirk and being like, you handled that perfectly. And I thought it's so good now that Lizzie and Tommy have... Excuse me, have this agreement now. Like, they seem to be on the same page. Like, she even calls him out. Like, you only came down here to, you know, mess with me to, like, uh, deal with your insecurities of knowing Mosley might have, me and him might have hooked up. So, like, I appreciate they did. They did. <laughs> I appreciate the transparency of what that relationship is now. Although, I do feel bad for Lizzie because, like, 
Tommy's still hung up on Grace, but I think he does genuinely love Lizzie. He just can't love Lizzie in the same way that he loved Grace. Um, uh, I thought it was also interesting this episode, just seeing the, the amount of guilt that he's carrying as far as like, that was the first time we saw Lizzie, not, excuse me, sorry, Grace actually being like bloody and stuff, um, in one of his, uh, hallucinations and yeah. bringing up the, the stone that was cursed, which, you know, the gypsy curse and all that and being like, it wasn't the stone, bruh, it's you. And, like, seeing, like, that's manifesting, like, he feels all this guilt uh, now himself. Even telling Ada, don't bring your kid around me because I ha I'm cursed. People die when they're around me. I think it's really sad, especially because the lengths Tommy goes to, to really, like, he's trying to do all this for his family and put his family in a position. Um, and he just keeps getting knocked back. Um, no matter how smart and clever he is, he has this, the fact that he couldn't save Grace. The Grace thing fucked him up. The Grace thing totally fucked him up, which makes sense and is understandable. But uh, I like the fact that that's something that he's struggling with. And I think the way that they're doing it, too, makes a lot of sense with him, with the opium and all that stuff. And then having opium come back <laughs> in such a big play that they did this episode isn't even something you're thinking about. Yeah. But again, it's not a forced storyline because we know... Uh, Tommy's been on opium. That's how he like helps deal with the uh, PTSD that he has from the war and everything else. So I thought that was just so clever to write that in this season too. And we we say it over and over again. The writing of the show is just immaculate. Oh, and then last point. Oh, excuse me. It's Finn. Um, Finn is definitely stepping into the shoes, like a combination of both John and um, uh, Arthur. As far as having, like, Arthur's kind of, like, set off. So, like, mm -hmm. Finn was very innocent for, like, five seconds. But, like, he's definitely stepping in to be a Shelby brother. And I'm curious to see uh, how that plays out. Um, but all in all, super solid episode. I do think that they're uh, setting up a, pl a potential plot device that Gina knows Mosley. Because, like, you see clearly... The Lynx mostly goes and doing his research, research yeah. and strategy. Um, who, who, who's to think he didn't plot Gina, set up Gina way back in the day? Oh, Michael. Uh, and knows, and knows the the disparity that Michael has amidst the family. Like that's a way to like cut through that dynamic too. And I don't put it past him. Um, and I don't think it was just looks because Gina is. Uh, Attractive. I, I felt like it was, I don't know, it just feels too coincidental. Yeah. Let's see. But really good episode. Uh, cannot wait. The next two are the penultimate and the finale oh, yeah. already. Yeah. So it's about to set it off. Can't wait to check it out. All right. Well, look, thank you guys again for watching another Real Talk Reaction for Peaky Blinders, Season 5, Episode Number 4. And until next time.